The S24 Ultra is a productivity machine, but you're not using it to its full potential. Today, I'm going to show you five productivity features and how you can take advantage of them to get the most stuff done on your Galaxy S24 Ultra. Now let's go. This video is sponsored by Squarespace. I hear a lot of people that watch YouTube complain that a lot of us just talk about the cameras of a smartphone. And yeah, I mean, that's usually the thing that you can compare and demonstrate the most, particularly when it comes to last year's version to this year's. But I do things a bit different here at Tech With Benefits. I like to focus on the complete package of the Samsung smartphone experience, and productivity is a large part, particularly on the S24 Ultra. So let's dive into five things that I think you can do to get the most and get the most stuff done using your phone. The first one is multi-window. Now a lot of you probably know about multi-window already, and if you don't, allow me to introduce it to you. Multi-window is Samsung's very easy to use split screen function that allows you to open up multiple apps at a time. On the S24 Ultra with its big 6.8 inch display, you can easily see two apps top and bottom, no problem. But you can even extend beyond that by opening up pop-up windows and interacting with multiple apps at once, more than just the two in the split screen environment. Before we get into all of that, let me just show you where multi-window lies. In the settings menu, under the advanced features heading, you have multi-window. In here is multiple ways you can open up and have multi-window be activated. You've got the two finger swipe up for split screen, which allows you to swipe up from the bottom or left and right to activate the split screen function. You've got the swipe for pop-up view, this is the swiping from the corner and dragging down to get your pop-up view open. And then there's a toggle in here called full screen for split view. Basically what this does is just hides the status and the navigation bars from view. So you get the full picture and extends the apps out as big as possible. There's another thing in here that you'll see where you're looking for type thing, multi-window for all apps. If you go into here, basically you can toggle on like a labs feature that forces apps that don't support multi-window into supporting it. You'll find though that pretty much all apps support it nowadays, but Samsung still have this in here for that 1% that don't, and I'm glad they do. Now you might think that's the end of multi-window and the experience, but it's not. If you go to Goodlock, which is downloadable from the Galaxy Store, not the Play Store, and then you go into the life up part of Goodlock, you'll see multi-star. Now there is a lot in here that has been actually removed out and put into the advanced features one. And you'll probably find that as time goes on, most of these end up making their way into the full One UI experience. But the ones that aren't sit here inside multi-star. Now I'm not gonna go into all of them that are in here. The main two toggles that I like to turn on, the multi-window focus, the multi-focus one. So it's allowing two apps to be focused at the same time and the multi-window zoom, which basically means that it's a full picture. Like it extends it out and sort of shrinks it to get the full app or the full website. Whereas the other way, it just sort of scales it. And I like the other way for some reason. I like the toggled on versus toggled off. But that's where it sits. There's a whole bunch of other stuff in here. I'm not going to go too deep into it. The actual multi-window experience itself is quite extensive. Not only can you have two apps open at once and interact with two things at once, but there's various different ways to actually get there. I showed you the swipes that you can do, but there's other ways too. Like you can use the edge panels where you actually have your app sitting there on an edge dock and then you can drop them into place. My favorite way of using this is having a full screen app and then opening up a pop-up of an app like a messenger app, for example. The other way you can sort of extend this out too is if notification comes through and you, again, don't want to interrupt the action that you're doing, you can hold down that notification and drag that into a pop-up. That way, again, you still get the experience of the full screen app behind it and then the pop-up sitting in front of it. But there's so many things you can do. For example, being able to drag a photo into a note, for example, or being able to drag a photo into a message. Or if you want a website that you want to open up and you don't want to disturb the website you're on, you can hold down on the link, drag it to the side and open it in a bottom multi-window screen. So then you have two websites open at the same time. So you can do comparisons, for example. Say example more. You get my point. There's so many things that you can do here and the multi-window experience is really rich because of it. Second thing is modes and routines. Now there's so much in here that I really like. I've set up routines years ago that have just stayed. Every time I smart switch, they extend their way through. In the routines that I use, for example, is whenever I open up YouTube, I've got it to set the volume to a certain way. I turn auto rotate on and I turn on do not disturb. Because if I'm watching some content and I don't want to be distracted from any external factors, 
do not disturb or block notifications, and I can just enjoy and focus on the material in front of me. That's just one example. Another one is having Spotify launch whenever I hit my car Bluetooth. Again, another sort of really simple one that just shows you something that can take the stress out of using your phone. But whilst routines are probably a really fun thing to interact with and sets off a whole bunch of different stuff, I wanna focus on the modes for this video. In the modes tab, Samsung have some preset stuff. You've got work, you've got driving, you've got sleep. Basically, they're just things that when you toggle this mode on, it will activate that list of things. And you can kind of focus on what it is you want to do based off the thing you've created or it's created for you. If you go to add mode, and I'm doing it as I'm talking, you can basically choose the title, you could choose color, and then you can choose a bit of a an icon for it. I've made one for editing. So if I ever want to do some editing and I just don't want to be distracted, I will turn this on and then it will list off a bunch of things that will happen. And then I turn it off when I'm finished. There's conditions, so I can have it be based off when it's connected to a Bluetooth device, when a specific app has been opened, when there's a time period that's been activated, or if there's a place that I've visited. There's a whole bunch of other conditions you can add as well. These are just the ones that sit automatically that you can choose from. Then there's the actions that you can add in. So do not disturb, for example, is a suggested one. And then also restricting specific app usage. So I can make sure that X slash Twitter, Instagram, Facebook can't be accessed. YouTube, YouTube Studio, restricted because I don't want to jump into those when I'm trying to focus on editing videos. There's other actions too that you can enable. So it's not just about the main ones. There's other actions and conditions you can put in. So I can have it read notifications aloud. So rather than me picking up my phone to check, it can read it to me when I'm in this focused state. And what's great too is it will change the phone appearance should you want it to both your lock screen, your home screen, and your watch face. I really like the total control and automation that Samsung give you with a mode. Love it. Then you also have the option to add these as a widget to your, to your home screens. So whether it be a mode or a routine, you can start it just by tapping on the widget and it will activate it. There's a couple of different widgets that you can put in there. There's the single mode, single routine, and then multiple routines. Obviously for modes, you're using the mode one. But you just tap on it and then tap on it again to finish it. It's fantastic. Something else that I'm trying to get done when I'm in this focus state is build my own website. And thanks to today's sponsor, Squarespace, I'm doing just that. Squarespace is providing me all the tools that I need to extend my productivity from just on my smartphone and into having an online presence. They make it so easy to get started with the Fluid Engine. It allows you to get started with easy to use customizable templates that are world-class so you can get started by picking and choosing where you want things to go. When you are setting up your website, ensuring it reflects you and your personal brand is very important. Squarespace has built in AI to take your colors from your brand and style and impart it into a full color scheme for your website. Simply load in your logo and your colors and it will take care of the rest. This will help you when you're building out your Squarespace shop as you can ensure the colors match your style and reflect your personal brand. This means your customers can buy into not just your merchandise, but you as a person. I've tried Squarespace, now it's your turn. Head to squarespace.com for your own exclusive free trial. And when you are ready to graduate into the full version, use the link on the screen now and in the description to save 10% of your first purchase or domain. Thank you to Squarespace for sponsoring this video. Now there's another part of, I guess, modes, and this is number three, it's the digital well-being app in the settings. You might not think this is a productivity one, but hear me out. There's some controls in here that allows you to switch focuses away from what you're doing so you can focus on the thing you need to be doing. There's two things in here. There's screen time goal and there's app timers. Screen time goal kind of speaks for itself. It gives you a goal of screen time and then sort of alerts you along the way. App timers is one I really want to highlight because this for me has drastically reduced my time on social media apps, in particular Twitter. I just found myself random points throughout the day, just scrolling for no reason whatsoever. And then I'd be working myself up because, well, we all know what Twitter's like, especially now. So for me, I've limited it to an hour a day. Even that's too much, to be honest. But I can see as that time starts to erode, I'm picking my times as I'm using it. So I'm not overloading myself and I'm actually saving some in the bank for towards the end of the day when I know I might want to scroll mindlessly for a little bit. Because what I was doing is I was literally picking this up for no reason whatsoever, hitting Twitter for absolutely zero, point, zero purpose. So having the app timers turned on has been a great productivity tool for me because I've now been able to dedicate that time to other things like 
writing video ideas down. Oh, and, and parenting. Number four is Samsung Notes. Now, Samsung Notes might speak for itself when it comes to productivity, but there are some things in here that I think really could lend itself to people and getting stuff done. I'm gonna highlight three, because I think that's just enough to get yourself involved in Samsung Notes and be able to then maybe dive a bit deeper later, especially when I make a video about it. The first thing I wanna highlight with Samsung Notes is the ability to record audio as you're taking your meeting minutes or notes. So think about it, right? You're taking notes, you're writing down, and you're also recording what the other person is saying at the same time. What you can do is as you're recording, it will basically sort of mark down the point at which the audio has been happening versus what you're writing. So when you play it back later, you can jump to certain parts of the recording based off what you wrote down at the time. Really clever. So if you've got deep in your notes that you're writing, you click on it, it will forward the audio to that point and play you the audio that was recorded at the time that you were writing that. So you can imagine if you're in a lecture or if you're in a meeting and you're recording it, you don't have to maybe take the most detailed notes. You can just write real basic detail and then fill it in later with context using the audio that you recorded. Take a listen to how it works. So today I want to talk about what's going to happen next week because next week's really important to our business. So next week we want to sales, uh, not just money, but percent because next week, because next week's really important to our business. Number two in Samsung Notes is the folder structure that you can create. It was introduced a couple of years ago and I really loved what they did. They basically allowed you to create a file system within Samsung Notes because before it was a little bit chaotic. You can create folders, subfolders, and drag and drop things into its place that it needs to go. For myself, I've got a lot going on. I've got my YouTube channel. I also, if you haven't already been aware, I also work on Sam Mobile's YouTube channel. I do their TikTok and all their social media videos. And then I also create trivia rounds for the trivia that I work for. So there's a lot that I've got on the go. And for me, having these folders and structures allows me to organize everything. I can drag and drop. I can create and then attach it to a folder from the moment I create it. And then you could see the folder structure in a nice, neat, orderly fashion. I like what Samsung have done with the folder system. It definitely makes the productivity in the notes a lot better. And the third one, well, I have to say it, it's the S Pen. The S Pen is by far, especially for the Ultra, the best productivity tool to go with Samsung Notes. Just sits inside the phone waiting for you and then you can do things like take a screen off memo you can write things down on a note you can create shapes very autonomously do handwriting to digital text very seamlessly it's fantastic i'm not going to insert everything here with the s pen because i have already made a full video about it which you can find right here so i urge you to please go and watch that if you haven't already because the s pen is such a powerful tool and this video helps explain it. And the absolute last productivity feature is Samsung DeX. Of course it is, because this is not just a phone that's limited to what you can do with it that sits in your pocket. This can be extended into so much more. You can do things on portable displays. You can do Samsung DeX on your laptop. You can do Samsung DeX on TVs, which hopefully there's a cutaway. There was. You can also use Samsung DeX on laptops. It is just a such a powerful tool that allows you to take what's in your pocket and using a peripheral or wirelessly if you've got the right device to then extend it onto a display with a different interface. You've got more options for getting stuff done just from your phone versus anything else. Again, full video here. I'm not trying to palm you off into these videos. I genuinely believe that I explained it better in these videos. And if you were drawn to this video for productivity, and this is the first time you're hearing about Samsung DeX, I can point you to where there's better information already existing. Yes, I made it, whatever. So that's my top five productivity features. I did do one for the S23 Ultra last year. I talked about things like Samsung Flow, Link to Windows, and they're great. But I think if you're just wanting to get stuff done using the phone itself, these are my five things that I think you could start using right now. Make sure you subscribe to Tech With Benefits. Plenty of stuff on the channel here already. Come and follow me on my socials. I've got Twitter slash X, as you know, and also on Instagram. And I'll see you in the next one. You!